So far, the primary product that we sell off of this farm is um, goat and lamb. Uh, we sell meat by the cut. Uh, we have kind of a CSA model, monthly subscri subscription. Uh, we're in California. During California, the summers are very dry. And so there's limited amounts of forage that we can feed the animals. Um, we live on a pretty small property. And so um, the number of animals that we have exceeds our carrying capacity for sure. Um, and I'm trying to increase our carrying capacity basically. And because forage dries up in the summer, you know, all the grass and forbs and everything, um, I've been trying to figure out forage that will persist later into the summer and I've decided that uh, trees provide a compelling opportunity to produce more forage um, and uh, reduce our feed bill and continue to uh, provide our animals with high quality feed where we know the quality of the feed, it's got no pesticides, herbicides, all that. Uh, rather than purchasing hay, which is often of an unknown quality. Um, and so uh, that's kind of this long-term project that I've embarked upon, is growing just a ton of trees. Um, and so here we have some black locust. There's about 80 or so black locust trees. Here's pecan. So planted these from the seed that I got from a friend's house. Ribes arium, which is golden currant. I've got sycamore, I've got Osage orange, I've got mulberry. So all, all totaled in these beds that you're seeing here, there will be hundreds, if not, there's already hundreds, um, and there's probably going to be thousands of trees that sprout from these beds. That's kind of the vision, that's the project that I've embarked upon, is take... Um, you know, seed that's just dirt cheap, use it to produce trees, uh, and use those trees as a fodder for the animals. So this, these beds that you're seeing here are central to the project. And what they are, they're what's called an air prune bed. It's a type of raised bed, but it's actually raised off the ground. And so you can see here, uh, there's a gap between the bed in the ground and on the bottom you'll notice there's this um, wire mesh this hardware cloth instead of your traditional you know just a hard floor like a you know piece of plywood or something um, it has that wire mesh instead and what that does is as these seedlings sprout and they send out a taproot that taproot will grow down until it hits the air beneath the bed and when that happens it prunes itself and it's very much like uh, trimming a tree like if you have a runner going up vertically and you cut that runner that tree can't grow vertically from that runner anymore so it starts to grow laterally the same thing happens with the roots so the roots come down they hit the bottom of the bed when they hit the air they self prune and then because that runner has been pruned, it starts to send out branches laterally. And you get this nice full root system. Furthermore, you also have a nice wide area that the roots can inhabit. And that means that instead of hitting the bottom of a pot and spiraling like here, you know, for this plastic pot, if you have tap root that's coming down, it's gonna hit the bottom. It's not gonna self prune it's gonna hit the bottom and start spiraling, spiraling, trying to find its way out of this confined area. It spirals and spirals trying to, you know, trying to find an out. And what happens is the roots get all tangled and you basically get a permanent structure in your roots that can't really easily be undone. And so that sets you up for failure years down the road. The root system here um, basically starts growing and enlarging and the roots start uh, self-strangling. They're so, uh, wrapped up and tied up that as the roots grow they start constraining themselves and it strangles the tree and so years down the road your tree dies and you hardly even know why because it was years ago that you planted it before that root that poor root structure finally caught up with it and killed it 
ultimately the end game for these beds is that you um, you can remove these sides, for example, and then you you know have these hundreds or even thousands of trees that are all growing, and you basically um, separate out the roots from each of those individual trees, and then you've got um, separate trees that you can then plant out in the field or plant into pots for sale or what have you. So that is the idea of an air prune bed, and this video will show the construction of, of, an air, uh, of these air prune beds. I have um, five of them now that I've built, um, and this video will show the construction. They're very, very simple, very cheap, very quick. Oh man, I am way into that. That is awesome. Look at that beautiful air pruning bed. I am stoked. Pretty much $15 about worth of materials, maybe $20. I, the screws were probably the most expensive, but just scrap wood. And I bet you this thing's gonna last forever. I'm just super, super stoked right now. And let's test it out, see if I can stand on it. Cause there's gonna be hundreds of pounds worth of soil in here, so I should be able to walk in this on it. Feels great. Definitely not gonna give out as I start loading soil. These are just rock solid. There's no give in the sides whatsoever. This is the basic setup. Like I said, it's just a garden bed that's gonna be raised off the ground. So I've got these um, pressure treated legs and I'm going to use these will stand up like this and then I have these uh, two by sixes and I'll have one at the top and then another one below that and that'll leave a gap at the bottom where um, you know that's how it'll be raised off the ground so the bed will be at the top so there's one two by six and there's two two by sixes and then the space at the bottom will leave a gap and then the bottom is going to be covered with hardware cloth. Uh, and that'll hold the soil and it'll also provide that air pruning effect that we're after. So very, very simple. I, I plan on knocking this out in about, you know, an hour and a half. And uh, then I'll have an air prune bed that should last uh, many years. So it's pretty exciting. I've switched from using um, Phillips head screws for everything uh, to using uh, Torx, Torx heads. And these are just far superior to Phillips head screws. So if you don't already use Torx screws, I highly recommend these. They never strip. You get a really good bite with your with your uh, drill. Um, and uh, yeah, they're pretty easy to find in pretty much any size that you may need. And the bits are cheap. Um, and so yeah, these are far superior to Phillips. So this is what I use almost exclusively for th projects like this. size, perfect height. It's going to be really easy to work with. This is super exciting.
All right, just like that, I've got my two sides. Here it is, about 20 minutes in. This is looking awesome. I'm super, super excited. Very simple, just a you know, little bit of scrap wood, scrap lumber. Um, the only thing I'm really paying for is the hardware cloth and the screws that I'm using to put it together. So super cheap, super effective, super simple, very quick, very easy. Uh, one comment that I do have about this is that I'm making this pretty large. And that means that um, it's going to take a decent amount to move it once it's filled with soil. That means that um, you really have to be kind of careful about where you put it, make sure you have a spot for it. Um, I do have a spot set up for this. I know it's going to go really well in my um, kind of seed starting area. We've got plenty of space over there. Um, but it is something to think about that I know you can make some smaller versions of this that are much more compatible with a small space. So um, something to think about. But yeah, that's 20 minutes in, we're doing great. Got my measuring tape here. I'm just laying the hardware cloth out over the top of this to get the right width. And you can see it does a pretty good job at maintaining that all the way down. The uh, wood doesn't appear to be too warped or anything. It'll take the hardware cloth perfectly, I think. And so yep, that's already ready to go and I'll just start um, I'll get some sides ready for uh, yeah for the ends here I'm just doing one screw in each of these so far, and that'll allow me to move this around to get it nice and square. I'll be able to move this piece, get it square. I'll be able to move this piece and get it square. So just doing one screw at a time. All right, so if it's squared this up a little bit, I'm just doing it visually, not getting out a uh, square or you know, anything to measure it with, just kind of nice visual inspection. And looks pretty good to me. So now I'll start screwing in the uh, final screws. All right, the sides are all set up. You can see, it turned out pretty nice. Relatively square. It doesn't need to be perfect, so I'm not worried about it getting, you know, being perfectly square. Um, <clears throat> you can see the gap at the bottom. So I'll be putting uh, hardware cloth on the bottom. That's the air prune part of this whole thing. Um, and then I'll also be installing a couple of braces here in the middle, probably like one here, one here, um, that will, you know, once this is full of soil, there's going to be a whole bunch of weight pushing out on the sides. So I want to have something to keep the sides from bowling out too much. And I'll also be installing some slats along the bottom. I'll, I'll put the cloth, I'll batten down the cloth, the hardware cloth, and then I'll also put some, um, uh, slats uh, horizontally to uh, support the bottom since it's going to be so much soil. So I've got these all leveled out now. So this is pretty much flush all the way along the bottom. 
cut out this one as well so it's nice and flush here. Uh, now I'm going to start mapping out how I'm going to do the hardware cloth. I'm actually going to do two layers of hardware cloth. I'm going to do this heavier gauge that's going to be to carry the bulk of the weight and then I'll put another layer of um, half inch by half inch hardware cloth on you know in, in a second layer that will then hold the soil in place so I'll put the half inch by half inch first and then I'll put this one underneath it as a to support uh, the weight of the soil <laughs> out quite nicely. You can see I've got these pieces here that I'll use to batten down the metal and then I have this excess here. I can use that excess to batten down this edge and this edge uh, but I'll need a little bit extra to go through these middle two pieces. This is all done. A little over two hours, I think, from start to finish. Not bad at all, and quite a fun little project. Very easy, um, and nothing really, no difficult parts. It's all just like smooth sailing, a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm gonna go move this to its new permanent location, and I'll start filling it with soil, and then start planting seeds almost immediately. <laughs> 